This is Adeptus Nubis, and today I bring you a 1v1 on Caldera's Refinery between very two excellent players, namely Tex and Ye. Let's start with Tex, who has um, chosen the Warlock to go into battle for him with his Drag Queen color scheme, a very, a very offensive oriented me uh, melee spellcaster, can be upgraded to be highly disruptive or uh, highly supportive as well. Um, up against Ye, who is playing the Lord Commissar, who seems to have... Uh, well, his arm seems to be very strong because he is always lifting that sword up very, very high and looks very big. Um, is a melee commander, has a refractor shield out of the gate. It's, I think, the least efficient shield all of, out of all. Um, has great support abilities, but also huge melee or um, supportive buffs. We shall see how this one turns out. Sentinel being built right off the gate and doing what it does best, not leading and immediately harassing capping units on this side of the map. So Ye doing his best to stop the Elder approach and deny Tex his capping capabilities since Elder units are very fast out of the gate. Banshees, they had enough of this Sentinel, they will go look for this Lord Commissar. Banshees in a 1v1 with the Lord Commissar, unless the Lord Commissar gets a, a very good special off, will lose, as far as I know. Warlock being very, very aggressive here, um, doesn't want Ye to get uh, back on the field as well, and uh, pushes Ye's guardsmen all the way back to the, to the base. Sentinel almost going down here. I seem to have missed it. Um, Double Die Avengers will most certainly be very, very dangerous for a Sentinel early on, especially if the Sentinel is left without repair support. Guardsman, of course, being the repairing unit for Imperial Guard. Now, let's see how this one turns out. What comes out engages these Banshees. If he activates his Refractor Shield, he cannot be knocked down. <laughs> but this lucky special will most definitely decided the uh, outcome of this battle. Yes, and the Lord Commissar will have to fall back. Might even go down for his trouble here. If, if it weren't for that special... Let's see, Warlock is on retreat as well. Could chip in any moment with the melee attack? No. The ranged attack is enough to kill the Lord Commissar. That is a huge loss early on. That's 250 requisition to repurchase the Lord Commissar, but Ye doing a fantastic job keeping these Die Avengers occupied. Um, Die Avengers did purchase their battle equipment, gives them access to... There were some recent changes to the battle equipment since 2.6. Um, battle equipment now restores the Die Avengers per model health from 100 to 120, where at 2.5.1 they had to uh, 120 out of the gate. And, of course, they gain access to Plasma Grenades and Energy Shields. So, fantastic job from Ye so far. But, it didn't stop Tex from gaining a lot of map presence. And, the, the kill on the Lord Commissar was was quite important there as well. I think it, yeah, it, it gave the Banshees a lot of XP. Like, their XP bar is already half full. And, leveled Banshees against IG are very very dangerous. So we see an Exarch on the other Die Avenger squad, I'm thinking he's anticipating the Catagen pur uh, purchase, Texas anticipating the Catagen purchase here, but I'm not so sure because he also purchased Rangers. Rangers now also had a major overhaul, they do significantly less damage by damage per shot, both unreliable missing here by the way, um, 55 damage per shot, and they're significantly cheaper here as well, so double battle equipment for Tex. Hmm. He might go for a lot of uh, standoffs, but then again, Elder do not fare so well in direct standoffs, especially against such factions. Uh, like Imperial Guard, who do 
have brain superiority because of their sustainability. It's not due to their firepower, it's more to due to their sustainability on the field with their constant reinforcements and their reinforcements being very very cheap. Look, Firmus are in a bit of trouble here again. These Banshees are doing quite a fantastic job disrupting the back lines here from Ye and constantly keeping map pressure on his natural um, points, the victory point, the requisition points here. A requisition point here as well, and this one isn't even capped. This one is even fully matured, so good job here from Tex. And he's coming back out, fleet of foot, and kinetic pulls maybe into grenades. No, he actually misses that opportunity. Wants to get behind the sentinel, and I think he's going for the kill on the sentinel. Sentinel does stomp one squad though, and let's see if he gets out. One dire avenger squad will not be uh, enough to kill it. And let's look at the red here, yes, EA also had enough red for a player, so if the Sentinel was really, um, if the Sentinel's death was imminent, then he could have used the player. Uh, those two grenades, quite of a miscalculation of the retreat path here. And we see channeling runes on the Dire Avengers, very interesting choice here, I'm guessing it's to support the Banshees more, or... I'm not sure what the reasoning behind this is. We have lost the generator to Maybe because of the catechins. I think it's because of the catechins. And flamer guardsmen. Very, very sneaky flamer guardsmen. Bashing power here. Nice split of, atten um, of attention here. These guardians, uh, guardsmen might go down there for their trouble. Rangers, no slouch in melee combat. I'm, I'm sure not many people know this, but rangers on retreat path actually are quite scary. Wow, they are so low. 12 HP, and they do get out. 7 HP, 5, 4. So close. One kinetic pulse would have finished them off. 2 HP, that is not what you want to see as Elder. You want to see the kill. I'm thinking the Kinetic Pulse must have been off, uh, off cooldown, since um, Kinetic Pulse, if you now purchase the Pathfinder War Gear for upgrade, the splash damage is restored to the Kinetic Pulse, because the vanilla Kinetic Pulse now does no damage at all, it's just, just disruptive. Polo Field being casted here, Sentinels do detect but only in a radius of 15. Catagens are the natural detection unit for IG. The Swallow is very, very close. I'm going down and will obviously go down here. Sentinel or Commissar. I love to with a strong sidearm out of the gate. Sentinel going in for the stomp. Stomps the Banshees. That is important. Catagens off the field. But now let's see. Guardsmen and the Lord Commissar will destroy these Banshees most definitely. And now with the support of the Sentinel, the Dire Avengers have no choice but to fall back. And yeah, you kind of notice that the Rangers didn't have a lot of impact here. That's because their um, damage has been so significantly reduced. They could have been peeling off a lot of energy and HP from the Lord Commissar, but now they, w they won't even do that. And I've totally missed. Both players have, have gone to tier 2 already. Um, interesting timings here. Their vehicles will both come out at the same time. It's going to be the Falcon for Tex and the Chimera for Ye. The Falcon has undergone some changes as well. In tier 2, um, it's well, not, not only in tier 2, but it's going to be um, slower overall. Its speed has been decreased from 8 to 7. It will not get further decreased though with the purchase of the energy shield, which is out, which is also now significantly weaker than it was before. There you can see that the rangers actually do no significant damage whatsoever. Um, it's quite sad actually, since they used to be very very effective versus commanders, pe peeling down their damage on approach and making them think twice and now that is simply not the case anymore. We do have a lot of map control now for EA though, it's a triple cap. 
And I'm not quite sure why that is. Tech certainly does have the army here. And oh, he gets he gets the nice flank on rear armor on this on this Chimera. And this Chimera might very well be dead here. Falcon is also a um, soft AV option. Many people find it debatable whether it's not even whether it's a hard AV option or a soft AV option. But now we see the crack missiles on the Sentinel. Crack missiles on the Sentinel are actually quite potent against vehicles. I'm guessing he's gonna force off the divergence first. Wow, these captions are getting obliterated here and they will go down entirely. But Tex should sense that he has the upper hand here. The Falcon can most definitely kill the Chimera and the Double Dire Avengers can most definitely out-repair the Crack Missile from the Sentinel. And maybe he might even get the kill on both of these vehicles here. Tex is going for it. He's getting rear armor hits on this Chimera, so I'm guessing this Chimera is most definitely dead. But Tex is actually not... he's not pursuing the Chimera. And Ye is he's microing this fantastically. He is hiding behind this rock. Wow, this... We see mines being dropped here from Ye. He might even get the kill on the Falcon. Well, the Falcon takes the correct path, but this crack missile sentinel will most definitely kill the Falcon. I cannot believe this. Oh, wow. I cannot believe this. This is most definitely what you don't want to see. A Camera on 22 HP and the sentinel being on less than 200 health versus a full health Falcon losing to both both those vehicles where the Falcon should have easily been able to dominate both vehicles at the same time even without repair support. So that is a huge loss here and good job from Ye keeping um, both vehicles alive and leveling the Sentinel to 2. It's almost level 3. It seems like he's going for the Sentinel again. Um, there we see the auto drop auto drop on the sentinel misses but now we have rangers and rangers do increase damage versus the sentinel because the sentinel despite it being a vehicle has heavy infantry armor sentinel gets the hell out of there let's see if he will make it yes actually makes it um primarily in a little bit of trouble here because we now see the banji exarch with the heavy melee spear but the camera is simply too fast we might see the fusion gun on the Orchak here. Fusion gun semi-potent versus vehicles. We see the, the jump, which heals and buffs the speed of the units that are in the uh, attack radius. And there we see the damage. I think it also buffs the damage. But yeah, these banshees not enough to kill this Kybera. Yeah, keeping close eye on this, but I'm not keeping a close eye on something else because the sentinel went down oh poor sentinel was almost level 3 here Chimera does survive though and now we see Orgrins on the field we shall see how Orgrins will fare since we have Banshees which are already level level 2 almost level 3 and they will find they will have a hard time versus level Banshees because if without their ability um, they will not get specials against these batches. And with the Autark and the channeling runes from the Warlock, I am not sure about these Ogrins. The enemy is claiming a victory point. Our reinforcements are here. And these Rangers are piling on their pathetic damage onto the Lord Commissar. Let's actually look at this. Yeah. They infiltrate and get the hell out of there. Well, in another 25 seconds, they can disrupt the Lord Commissar again because their kinetic pulse, pulse cooldown has been significant, significantly decreased um, in 2.6, where it has been 70 seconds before. The vanilla kinetic pulse is now on a 50 second cooldown, and if you purchase the Pathfinder War Gear, it is going down even further to. I think 30 or 35 seconds. We now have Fire Dragons. Tex really wants to deal with this Chimera. It is being highly, highly 
uh, important here for Ye. I think it's the cornerstone unit of his army composition because it's supporting his double guardsman build so well and it's going to synergize fantastically with the ogrens here because the Lord Commissar also has the Carface armor so we might see a lot of executions here. Double missile uh, multi-last turrets here. It looks like he's preparing for the upcoming fight. He's putting up a very defensive position here. Lord Commissar can obviously chill because he does now also have the stubbornness. The more units that surround him, the more a, uh, the more his HP regeneration rate goes up and his damage is also increased up to a maximum of 75% damage increase which is just insane. Now we see the Orgrins go in, they use their charge, there you see the Banshees being knocked over, so are the Fire Dragons and the Chimera is supporting all these Guard, uh, these guardsmen here, but now you see the multi lasters coming into place, and don't tell me they're being useless after the three minute mark. Dear Sir Atlas, they just totally won. Yay, this engagement. Um, Fire Dragons had to pull back. Rangers, well, they're kind of useless right now. I'm not even sure why it takes them them. Because there was no infiltration going on and the Chimera is doing the rest because the Warlock and the Rangers cannot possibly uh, threaten the Chimera here. And we might even see a push for the power which has not been rebuilt. No. And Tex is going for Wraithguard on top of that. He is really going for this Chimera. Wraithguard also now have undergone quite some changes. Wraithguard do not have their fire on the move anymore. We have lost the structure to the enemy. They have increased health now, um, decreased movement speed, if I remember correctly, or I'm not quite sure about that one. So I'm sorry about that one. But um, yeah, and their courage damage has the been decreased again, the so they can suppress with their bodies. And here they come, and their warlock leader, yes does not leap into combat anymore and gives now uh, he grants a sight bonus up to I think 50 range there we go Wraithguard have been revealed to Ye and he backs off his Chimera and rightfully so because Wraithguard will absolutely destroy a Chimera especially in conjunction with the Fire Dragons one concerted push uh, Tex might even use What's it called? Swift, the Swift Movement Global. We do have organs on the field here. Um, Tex might even choose to go for the Warp Throw War Gear on his Warlock to better defend his Wraith Guard because these Wraith Guard will actually be on a huge threat now from these Ogrens. Ogrens will obviously go immediately for oh that was that was a bad play right there because these Ogrens are most definitely gonna kill these Rangers. Rangers have been decreased in upkeep and population but still don't want to lose a squad like that and we see a heavy weapons team now. Could be fantastic but look at the courage damage here on the Ogrens and uh, Lord Kromsa has to tie up these Wraith Guard these Wraith Guard will do terrible things to an IG army. Fire Rings are being suppressed as well though, and now here comes the Chimera as well, granting the reinforcement support. That is so very, very important for these Guardsmen, and these Guardsmen do not even care about being shot at by Wraith Guard. Now we see another, we see a squad here, level 3, with Plasma Guns now to effectively fire these Wraith Guard, and this is turning very, very bad now for Tex who had the upper hand in the early game here but he seems to be unable to control the Ogrens here Otter does what she does best she just fleets all over the map she's she's very very fast I think she has space speed 8 which is insane and she will be able to decap all your backline points without you being able to follow her around especially since she can also activate fleet of foot which makes her even faster and we see another push here out of base 
from Tex. He is not giving up on this one. It's uh, 79 to 156 on BPs. But it's looking very grim. What he needs to do is he needs to be able to kill the guardsman, uh, the chimera. But this this is not going to happen since he has to deal with the heavy weapon team first, and that's going to be the job of the wraith guard. But the heavy weapons team is also being uh, protected here by the Yorkrins who can just run in at any time because the double dire avengers they cannot. Um, realistically threaten the Ogren since they have super heavy infantry armor and take reduced damage from piercing DPS. So now we see the the change of the Wraith Guard's loss of fleet of foot and uh, fire on the move, I'm sorry, um, coming into effect. Where they would have fired their weapons before, they now don't. And it's actually huge, and yeah, Texas, uh, he's hard pressed to even get out of base, and he concedes because there's nothing really that he could do right now to actually get out of that. Mm, he also seems to have lost his Ortark. Uh, I kind of missed that one. Maybe he should have disrupted the. I'm thinking, yeah, he should have really gone for the warp throw because these ogrens were a huge problem, and I think a shuriken would have helped as well, because he needed something to suppress this blob. Yes, the wraith guard now suppress as well, but there are plasma plasma gun guardsmen with the support of a chimera, and I'm guessing these guardsmen. Let's look at them. Yeah, twelve out of twelve, twelve out of twelve. That means they had the sergeant and the commissar which both grant um, an extra model for re for every model that you reinforce so you don't want to go into a ranged fight with those wraith guard or guardsmen especially if they're being protected by the lord commissar and some ogrins so there you have it um, Yay won this fine match, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click that follow button, click that subscribe button, spread the word, because I will be taking up more replays now, um, especially since Red Rupee and Maestro Cortella have been not releasing so many videos in the past. Um, I hope to see you soon in the next installment of my 1v1 casts.